Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is a highly requested video. Tons of you have messaged me asking me how I revised at medical school. And then I put a poll on my Instagram stories asking whether you'd like to see this and lots of you said yes. So here it is. It's exam season right now. The late spring and early summer is always exam time for us. And I know some of you have had exams, particularly people in final year, but a lot of you are still having exams and will be having exams through May and June as well. So I just wanted to talk you through the sorts of things I did at medical school to help me get through exams and the revision techniques I used and what really helped me and things I kind of wish I did more of. I'm speaking as someone who, when I started medical school, we had a exam at the end of Christmas and the beginning of January. It was a mock exam and it was my first year and I spent all of Christmas revising. I studied loads, like I didn't spend that much time with my family other than on Christmas day and I was always studying in my room for this exam and I ended up getting like 46% which was a fail and I remember being so gutted and it really contributed to my feeling of like what am I doing at medical school, I don't belong here, I'm never going to do okay in it but then I really changed how I revised and I'm going to talk about some of the things I started doing differently and then I ended up doing okay in all the other exams I had. I think I might have done not too well or just passed one or two of the exams but yeah generally I did I think I passed every exam I had after that. Um, so yeah these are just some tips I picked up along the way you might not like them you might find some of them helpful but I just wanted to run through things and it might give you a new way of thinking about how you revise. Before I get into this video I want to touch on a few things first of all this is just what worked for me and it might not work for you or you might not necessarily th find the, all of these things helpful. But just remember that everyone's different and everybody finds different revision techniques helpful for them. And everyone's learning style is different as well. I'll touch on this in the video, but I'm quite a visual learner. So the things I do work really well for me, but they might not necessarily work for you. Um, also remember that what your friends are doing might not necessarily work for you and just focus on what you're doing and that will help you keep going in your revision. The other thing that took me a really long time to realise is that people are not always honest about how much revision they've done and you kind of just need to really remember this and focus on yourself and focus on your own revision. The revision that someone else has done isn't going to impact your revision and I think even just understanding that and remembering to focus on yourself is really, really important because thinking about what they're doing is just distracting you and stressing you out and it isn't actually going to help your own studying and your own learning. So really do just focus on yourself and remember that people aren't always honest about what they're doing. And the third thing is please don't forget to look after yourself and look after your well-being and your happiness. And I've said in previous videos, it's really important to listen to your body. So if you find that you wake up and it's your fifth day of revision in a row and you're really, really tired and you just think you need a rest, take that rest. This is something I learned to do as I got older and as I progressed through medical school, but I found it really hard to kind of accept that I actually need to take a rest right now and it will make my revision more efficient when I do do it later. So if you feel that you're really tired and it's it's really hard, have a bit of a break and then come back to it because you need to protect your well-being and happiness as well. And if you're not happy, what's the point in doing well in exams? What's the point in trying to progress if you're completely sad in yourself? So please, please, please do remember to look after yourself. It's something I didn't do very well at during medical school and I do a lot better now, but it took me a really, really long time to understand that you do need to look after yourself as well in order to do okay in exams. So with that being said, I have tons and tons of tips and um, stories and things about what I did at medical school and how I revised. The first thing is to go through lectures at your own pace. So what I did is I went through each lecture and kind of made some notes on it and just try to really understand the concepts behind the lecture, especially at the beginning of medical school. There's so much to understand and to get your head around that you do need to kind of go through things yourself. And I just found that going through it at my own pace really helped to understand what was going on. The other thing I did a lot of, and I didn't start doing this more until the end of medical school, was watching YouTube videos. YouTube videos helped me so much. Um, and like I said, I'm a very visual learner. So watching videos of someone drawing out how, uh, say, the uh, how a thrombus is formed or someone talking through a specific disease with, with pictures really, really helped me. I would literally just search on YouTube the thing that I don't understand and hope that someone's made a video on it and there's so much out there now that I'm sure you would find a really useful video to help you help explain a topic to you. I often found that videos help so much more than my lecturers and watching a video would just really make it click into place and I'd understand it and I'd have that like aha moment where you realise what's going on and you understand it properly and then I would remember the videos even now I, there's some videos that I remember that I watched in medical school that I still remember and they still help me understand stuff. 
yourself. Another really useful thing for anatomy is a video series called Ackland's Anatomy. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find it for free and this is where they literally have a body, uh, a cadaver and they go through each layer and it's, it's just really helpful to go through the anatomy of each system and understand it layer by layer in a really clear way compared to when you're in a dissection room where it's not as clear as it could be. Another thing I found quite helpful is textbooks. Now I didn't have that many textbooks at medical school. Um, I think I really only use them for specialties. So for paediatrics, I used this one. I still have it and I still use it all the time. Uh, the Illustrated Textbook of Paediatrics by Tom LaSalle. I think there's a new version of this now, but um, I found that really helpful. It like, it's like, got tons and tons of information and pages and diagrams and I just again found it helpful to just read some prose on a topic and get that in my head then reading notes and going through lecture slides and it helped me kind of have a good overview of a topic as well so that textbook's really good for paediatrics I'll link all of the textbooks I mentioned down below then for obs and gynae I used 10 teachers that's a the two textbooks one for obstetrics and one for gynecology and then for psychiatry, I used a textbook called Psychiatry PRN. And I think these are the textbooks that most people at my medical school used. And then for general medicine, I found Kumar and Clark really, really helpful. It's kind of like another cheese and onion, but I just found Kumar and Clark explained it in a way that suited me more. And someone lent it to me and I really, really liked it. So I ended up just buying one myself. I don't know where it is now though. Maybe I sold it. Um, but yeah, Kumar and Clark is also a really, really helpful textbook. And I got a lot of these textbooks off eBay. You can find them because people are often selling them or older medical students often sell them, but they are actually a really good investment. And like I said, I still use my Lasawa's textbook. So if you can afford it, it's quite helpful to buy them and then you can have them and not stress about having to give them back and you can annotate them and things as well. I mentioned earlier that I made notes, but towards the end of medical school, especially when it was clinical medicine, a lot of my university used some notes by someone called Alistair Scott. Now, I don't know if these notes still circulate because they were made a few years before I was in final year, so they're probably made in like, I reckon 2015. Um, I, I'm sure there are now more modern notes that have been made, but basically having a set of notes that someone else has made, I would then go through these and annotate them loads and um, like, do things in certain colour groups and kind of just really try and understand the information in the notes. It's not often efficient to make your own notes um, and that's what I learned throughout medical school. At the beginning I often made my own notes and revised from them. But actually if someone else has made notes and you can rely on them and other people have recommended them to you then that can be really helpful as well. Um, then for my specialties I used some notes that my friend Akash made and he's kindly said that I can share it with you guys. He basically had some notes from lots of different places and he formatted them all, made them look really clear and then make, checked that they were all correct. And I used them for my specialty exams and they were so helpful. And lots of my friends use them as well and I've, I've sent them to other people over the years. Just remember though that they probably are a bit out of date. So I'm gonna leave a link to them in the info box down below, but they probably are out of date or not as up to date as other things that you might use. But I did really like how they're set out and they, I still use them. Like I did some teaching last week and I still refer back to his notes in order to help get my head around things and remember key points of certain conditions. So do use them, let me know if you find them useful as well. But yeah, I found using other people's notes who've already summarized key things for me, a really efficient way to study, particularly when I understood a topic and I just needed to learn the key facts rather than trying to get my head around the concepts. I would also then make loads and loads of like posters and tables and spider diagrams. And I'm a very pen and paper kind of person. So I literally, I actually have some examples here. I don't have many here because most of my notes are at my parents' house but I have some examples. So then this is this one's quite messy, but this is like a table I made of comparing all the different types of leukemias and lymphomas. So we have um, ALL up here, CLL, AML and CML. Um, and I would just literally grab a blank piece of paper. This is actually scrap paper. I don't even know what this is on the back. This was scrap paper. And I would put the key points that I need to learn. So I've already understood the pathophysiology using like my YouTube videos and whatever, and my textbooks and my lectures. And then this is just a, a key revision uh, piece of paper. And I'm a very visual learner, as I keep saying. So that's why I use things like color. Um, I also do weird things like these both begin with A and these are C. So I put the A's on the left hand side and the ones later on in the alphabet um on the other side and then i remember okay well that thing was in the top left corner and so it must be associated with aml because that was in the top left so like i found that things like that really helped so i always used those sorts of things to help me and i just find like having a piece of paper to hold so much better than um than using my laptop so i didn't actually 
when it came to revising, I would often just have a wad of paper and loads of Crayola felt tips. Like I would buy a new set of Crayola felt tips every single exam season and make things like that. Here's another one I found. This is from my pathology exam. So this is on immune deficiencies. So I just made a poster on all of the like common immune deficiencies. And I'm actually gonna use this because I've got an exam next month and this is a really nice summary of immune deficiencies and I can just learn it and hopefully get it in my head a bit more and also memorize the layout of the piece of paper. So yeah, making revision posters and tables are something I find really, really helpful. Often I'll stick them around my room so I can like, while I'm brushing my teeth, I can look at them. And using color and paper is such an important thing for me because it just really helps get things into my brain and helps me memorize it. I found making weird associations so helpful at medical school, particularly at the beginning when you're trying to remember like drug names or how they work or random cells. So one I can really specifically remember is being in second year and learning different antiemetics. And I remember learning that Ondansetron was a serotonin receptor antagonist because I imagined a robot dancing because the Tron is like a robot and it's dancing. So I literally would imagine a robot dancing and it being happy because of the serotonin part of it. like. Now, I can't even, it's funny to me that I even had to make that association because back then I couldn't even remember the word, but now it's like a drug I regularly prescribe, or at least I did when I was working in adult medicine. So I would just make weird associations like that and weird memory aids to try and help me remember things that I couldn't try and remember any other way. And yeah, I have tons and tons of examples of these, like Edwards syndrome is trisomy 18 because they both begin with E. I can't even think of other examples at the moment, but yeah, I definitely use this so much at medical school and don't be embarrassed to use weird associations and weird memory aids as well. Go through what you see on your placement. Now, this is a really important one and I really clearly remember being in my third year at medical school and being on, an, I think it was an A&E placement and we had a patient referred in with anemia and I can't remember anything else about the um, history, but I remember the doctor, the A&E doctor was like, oh, when you go home, just read up on anemia and like different causes of it, it'll be really helpful. And I so clearly remember just laughing in my head and being like, lol, that you think I'm gonna go home and read up on this. Like I either was just like, lol, because I've got other things to do or lol because this doesn't fit in with my revision plan to read up on anemia now like I'm not on haematology right now I'm revising something else which is just so stupid because I really really recommend this to, to medical students that are on placement with me now because if you read up on it while you're at placement just like on your way to work or on your, on your train journey or like during your lunch break just at some point literally just read the two or three pages on that topic then you can really associate it with a specific patient you can understand exactly what was done and then you can go to your placement the next day and ask questions and be like okay so i read up on this but why do we not do this and why do we not do that and that's something i try and do more of now as a doctor like when i see a condition i try and read up about it to help me remember things more and understand why we do certain things but I literally never did it as a medical student and I think it's so helpful and I would really recommend doing it if you can because it doesn't actually take much effort and it will really help you remember things in a more clinical way as well. Quizzing yourself and active recall. Now this is nothing new. I know lots and lots of like study YouTubers talk about this and lots of medical students do this at the moment. But when I was at medical school, it was something very new to me. And I actually think this is what was the game changer for me when I failed that mock exam. Someone said to me, the best way to revise is to kind of quiz yourself on everything. So turn things into questions. And that's what I ended up doing. And that's what really, really helped me get through my exams. Lots and lots of people use an app called Anki. And this is where you basically make flashcards, but on the other side of a flashcard is um, the que a question. And so I made lots and lots of Anki cards and it's all on your laptop or on your phone. And then when a question comes up, you can say if you found it easy, medium or hard. If you found it easy, then Anki won't give you that question for a really long time. And if you found it hard, then Anki will repeat the question like fairly soon. So it, so you can kind of reinforce that piece of information and that knowledge in your brain and learn the correct answer rather than remembering the wrong answer. So quizzing yourself is a really, really helpful way of learning. And it's definitely something that changed how I revised. If you don't want to use Anki, another thing you can do is kind of make your notes in question format. So I would like um, often just like write a title being like, what are the causes of Oh gosh, I can't think of an example. So for example, if I'm revising, say, urinary tract infections in children, I might make my notes in question format. So the, the first bullet point will be like, what are common causes of urinary tract infections in children? And then the bullet points underneath will have the different answers. And then I'll be like, what, what are investigations useful in a child presenting with a UTI? And then I'll have the answers underneath. And so then I can just cover up 
the answers and go through it like that. So yeah, quizzing yourself and active recall is really, really helpful and it just really makes sure that you know the topic well and that you can answer a question on, on a topic really easily and really understand that topic as well. Use question banks. Now, towards the end of my revision, it was basically all doing um, different questions. So I used like past test, past med. I would have different um, books that you can borrow from the library or buy, which are like 100 questions on specialties. And there were just loads and loads of question books that you could use. Um, I find doing questions so helpful. It just gets you into that exam mindset and also helps you think about why other answers aren't correct. And then you can also really learn from the answers as well. Then if you get something wrong, you can read up on it and you can consolidate that knowledge even more. So I find using question banks so helpful. And I definitely think it makes such a difference to your exam mark if you've done lots and lots of questions and you're in that way of thinking. So I really, really would give yourself lots of time to do lots of questions because that's the best way of testing your knowledge and making sure you understand how these questions work and exactly what sorts of things they test. It's really useful to learn from your answers and understand the topic more when you get something wrong. And I just think questions are such a useful way to consolidate your knowledge and be more prepared for the exam. Buzzwords. Now, buzzwords are very exam specific and they're not as useful when you're an actual doctor, but buzzwords really, really help when you're revising. And it's again, something that you can pick up more and more on when you're doing practice questions. So just knowing specific things mean something in an answer. So for example, if there was a question with a baby presenting with red currant jelly stool, then I know that that's intersusception because red currant jelly stool is a buzzword to indicate intersusception. Now the question might not necessarily be what is the diagnosis? It might be what is the management plan? But I already know that it's intersusception based on the red currant jelly stool. And then I need to think about the next step of what's the management plan. But being familiar with buzzwords can really help Help pick up marks and get questions correct and doing more and more practice questions can help pick up the buzzwords even more. In the notes that I've linked down below, my, um, my friend Akash's notes, he's got quite a few lists of buzzwords and if you find that there are specific buzzwords that keep coming up, you can write them down so then you kind of know um, these sorts of things indicate this. And you can even make an Anki flashcard on it, like if it said interception, what investigations would you do? And then on the other side, it talks about interception and what investigations you'd do. So just really use buzzwords, learn the common ones and um, make sure you're familiar with them so that you're not missing out on easy marks. Now my last tip is to study with friends. Revision can get so boring and I often found that revising with friends or just changing up my day a bit, talking through different topics or doing some questions together was really, really helpful. Um, sometimes me and my friends in the library would just like have a lunch break and talk through stuff or ask questions to each other. And you also will probably end up learning from them as well and things that you didn't necessarily know. And if you're trying to explain something but you can't do it fully, then that kind of shows you that you need to read around that topic more and understand it even better. So I would find that talking through different conditions and questions with friends was also a really helpful way to revise. And also practicing OSCEs with friends is so, so helpful. And um, practicing history taking and examinations, all of that is really helpful to do with friends because then you can learn from each other and help each other. Me and my friend Ashlyn, who is in one of my vlogs, the Westfield vlog, we did lots and lots of um, OSCE revision and PACES revision together when we were in fifth year and we'd really helped each other like get through that exam time and do well in exams, which was really nice and I definitely think revising together is a really, really helpful technique. That's the end of the video guys, I hope you find it helpful. Best of luck with your exams, I'm sure you'll do amazingly, but don't forget to look after yourselves as well because revision can be really difficult and you don't want to burn out just before it gets to that exam. Look after yourselves, make sure you sleep, make sure you see people that make you happy and make sure you're eating well as well. All of those things really help your revision. If you have any other revision tips, then drop them in the comments below. And if you do end up using Akash's notes, also let me know. I'm sure he'd be really pleased to see that people are using them and finding them helpful as well all these years on. See you in my next video, guys. Bye.